We have so far looked at modeling linear systems with state variable equations. However, most real world systems are nonlinear. The linear state variable control techniques are very powerful, and if possible, we would like to apply them to nonlinear systems as well. In order to do this, we need to linearize the nonlinear systems. The problem we want to solve with linearization is the following. Suppose we have a system whose dynamics is described as differential equations that are nonlinear in the states and the input, and the output is described as an equation that is nonlinear in terms of the states and the input. We want to approximate this nonlinear system with the normal linear state variable equations. Before we discuss how to linearize a system, let's first look at the principle of linearization. Consider the simplest possible system, one with only one state x and no input, and let's only look at linearizing the state equation. The nonlinear state equation is given by this equation, where the derivative of x is a nonlinear function of x. We can visualize the system as follows where the derivative of x is a nonlinear function of x. A linear function would be a straight line, so the linearization problem is fitting a straight line that best approximates the nonlinear function. To do this, we choose a point to linearize around, which we call x0. Then we calculate the slope of the nonlinear function f at x0. The fitted straight line goes through x0 and has the same slope as the function f at x0. The straight line is a good approximation in the vicinity of x0, but not necessarily elsewhere. Although it is possible to choose any linearization point in principle, for this module, we will only linearize at so-called equilibrium points, which are defined as points where the state derivative is equal to zero. Mathematically, this linearization is done by writing the nonlinear function as a Taylor series expansion and then retaining only the first two terms. For our nonlinear function, the first term of the Taylor series expansion is the function f evaluated at x0 and the second term is the derivative of the function f evaluated at x equal to x0 multiplied by the deviation of x from x0. Let's call this deviation delta x. The definition of the deviation is written out over here. The derivative of delta x is equal to x dot since x0 is a constant. Since we linearize at an equilibrium, the function at the equilibrium is equal to zero. The slope at the equilibrium is a constant. Let's call this, con this constant a. So we can now write the linearized equation as the derivative of the deviation is equal to a constant a times the deviation. We can also rearrange this equation to get the following equation where the state is equal to x0 plus delta x. The state is therefore the sum of a constant and a deviation where the deviation has approximately linear dynamics. In the general case where our system has an input and more than one state, we can go through the same linearization process. For this video, we won't go through the derivation. We will only look at the definitions and results. The nonlinear system is defined by the state equation where f is a vector function in terms of the states and input. By this we mean 
that there are a number of scalar nonlinear functions f1 to fn packed into a vector. The output equation is a nonlinear function in terms of the states and the input. To start the linearization process, we choose an equilibrium point around which to linearize. An equilibrium point is defined as a set of states x0 and input u0 such that the state derivatives are all zero. We now define the state deviation from the equilibrium point, the input deviation from equilibrium, and the output deviation from the equilibrium. The linearized system is given by these two equations. In the state equation, the derivative of delta x is the derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at x0 and u0 times delta x plus the derivative of f with respect to u evaluated at x0 and u0 times delta u. In the output equation, delta y is given by the derivative of g with respect to x evaluated at x0 and u0 times delta x plus the derivative of g with respect to u evaluated at x0 and u0. This will be a matrix, a column vector, a row vector and a scalar and we call them A, B, C and D. Let's look at the construction of these matrices in more detail. For matrix A, the derivative of f with respect to x is constructed as follows. The top left element is the derivative of the first function in f with respect to the first state. The next element in the top row is the derivative of function f1 with respect to the next state, all the way down to the derivative of f1 with respect to the last state. The next row is the derivative of f2, the second function in f, with respect to all the states, and it follows the same pattern down to the last row, which is the derivative of the last function in f with respect to all the states. For vector b, the derivative of f with respect to u is constructed as follows. Each of the functions in f are derived with respect to u and they are all packed together in a column vector. For vector c, the derivative of g with respect to x is constructed as follows. Function g is derived with respect to each of the states and they are all packed together in a row vector.